Haikyuu is not only one of my favorite sports stories, not only one of my favorite shonen, and not even only one of my favorite anime manga, but one of my favorite overall stories of all time in anything ever. And for someone who is as much of a character writing merchant as I am, any series that I love as much as this will naturally have an unbelievable cast. As a result, I felt like as the last of what I'm calling my Watch Mojo phase of videos, I had to dedicate one more ranking list to this series that has irrevocably changed me for the better in so many ways. However, considering that Haikyuu's characters are among what I consider to be my Mount Rushmore of fictional casts, the other entries being Hunter x Hunter, Umineko, and Final Fantasy XIV for anyone wondering, this all means that there are more than 20 fantastic characters in this series. And so, that means that we have a hefty list of honorable mentions, including Koshi Sugawara, Sachiro Hirugami, Keiji Akashi, Hajime Iwazumi, Coach Ukai, Takeda Sensei, Goshiki, Kindaichi, Shimizu, Kiryu, Sakusa, and Kazuyo Kagiyama, all of whom stole my heart and contributed greatly to the story in one way or another, be that through dynamics, character writing and psychology, thematic or anything else. However, now that we've given them their flowers, now is time to get into my definitive top 20. And this could change tomorrow, but let's get into it nonetheless. Number 20, Tadashi Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi doesn't get a ton of the spotlight early on in the story, comfortably being the least memorable of the first years and something of an accessory to Suki in the beginning. But the more the story progresses, the more we see who this character is, with his own insecurities and ascending journey to becoming a significant member of Karasuno becoming one of the most prominent and empowering threads in the story. He is a great balancer to a lot of Karasuno dynamics, he is incredibly likable like the rest of the cast, and overall his journey is one of the most inspiring. A great example of the idea of connection both strategically and thematically. Number 19, Hitoka Yachi. I adore Yachi, and she would definitely be higher on this list if I only factored emotional connection into it and not writing and presentation. But as it is, she comfortably makes it as one of the most notable and unique. She's one of the characters in this story that makes me tear up on command, just factoring in her arc, her interactions, and just how sweet and endearing she is, and to me a big part of why Season 2 felt elevated was not only through her sheer presence, but through how the story so beautifully contextualizes the growth and struggles of our boys through the fresh eyes of someone new to the sport and culture. Yachi is amazing, and deserves all the love and happiness in the world. Number 18. Sawamura Daichi. Daichi is actually one of the most simple characters in Haikyuu, but when there is so much heart and soul poured into his every contribution to the series, minor and major, complexity isn't needed whatsoever. While he isn't as unique as some of the other examples in this story, he is just the ideal captain in a traditional sense, a foundation both psychologically and on the court, someone who despises losing and not only provides that winning mentality, but supports all of his teammates in completely different ways depending on the approach needed. He's core to one of my favorite character dynamics in the series with the rest of the third years, and all in all I can't think of a better choice to be the spearhead for the Karasuno Uprising. Daichi never once wavered or gave up, and neither did he stop being a beautiful soul all the while. Number 17, Satori Tendo. Tendo is easily one of my favorite personifications in the series when it comes to conveying the court as a paradise and place of respite to feel good and fly, in spite of whether or not that player wants it to become their career later on. Having grown up ostracized, bullied, and made fun of, and having found an outlet for joy through volleyball and the community and family culture it provided, Tendo humanizes Washijo, Ushijima, and Shida Torizawa as a whole, and works as a sort of symbolic encapsulation of how the court can transport those on it into another realm where everything is beautiful. While he never thought of the sport as a genuine career path, he did see it as a beautiful respite where he could feel all manner of connections and joys. And there is something so sacred and profound about that, as he used the experience to push on in his life. Tendo is a magnificent character, and it also helps that he utters a couple of my absolute favorite lines in the series. Number 16, Tetsudo Kudo. As the second captain on this list, and spoiler alert, not the last, Kudo distinguishes himself through the way in which he views volleyball as this collaboration. 
He has the distinction of being the only member of an opposing team that Kurasuno faces that I don't really view as an antagonist, and that is because of how he pushes others to learn, improve, and be better along with his own team. From the moment he learned of the concept of lowering the net from Nekomata, the idea that the joy of being able to succeed should first and foremost be the hook to getting people into volleyball was so prominent in his mind. And through the way in which he strives to make the Battle of the Garbage Dump a reality for both his team and his coach, the way that he pushes Kenma and his own teammates because he knows they'll deeply value the experience, the way he helps Suki learn while forming friendly rivalries and bonds with the likes of Bokuto and Daichi, Kudo is an advocate of volleyball as a whole, and while he obviously wants Nekoma to win it all, he is the character that is most driven to help his friends on other teams, and volleyball in general, succeed. And in that way, he is such a great personification of both empathy and the beauty of volleyball. Number 15, Ryonosuke Tanaka. Similar to Daichi, Tanaka is another character that isn't particularly complex or unique in concept, but the execution is what works wonders here. He is absolutely resolute, with one of the strongest and most persevering mentalities in the series and an infectious energy that encourages all those around him to follow suit. But the key to Tanaka that helped him click for me and turn him from extremely likable and endearing to a genuinely amazing character is the heart of his struggles. The fact that he occasionally nosedives into negativity and doubts himself, thinking of himself as average and nowhere near the skill of his teammates, wondering what he's even doing on the court. He isn't so unyielding because of the absence of vulnerability, but the presence of it. He doesn't let his insecurities define him and works himself to the bone to be the best teammate, senpai, and support he can be. Number 14, Osamu Mia. Osamu is a character that I find can sometimes be overlooked in favor of his brother, who just overall has the more legendary and impactful moments and the more prominent arc. But to me, that is completely unfair, because not only is Osamu one of the more low-key shining lights of the whole cast, but Atsumu would not be Atsumu without him. The brothers' relationship is one of the very best in the story, one of kinship and love as they push each other to be as happy as they can be with their lives throughout the series and avoid loneliness and desolation thanks to the other. Every monster in the series has their periods of loneliness, and Atsumu's hit when he realized Osamu wouldn't walk the same path as him. But the blow was softened because despite quitting volleyball, Osamu was always going to be there for Atsumu, and vice versa. I can't imagine the burden Osamu must have felt when he realized in the middle of one of the biggest matches of their lives thanks to Hinata that he was not going to play volleyball forever, while knowing how that would affect his brother. But true to himself, he followed his path, and along with Kita, created a beautiful support system and one of the best thematic dynamics in the whole story. Number 13, Yu Nishinoya. Nishinoya is another one of the characters that I initially put in the super likable and charismatic category without thinking that he was too much more than that, but the more the story goes on, the more it clicks that he is completely emblematic of everything that Haikyuu is. Along with Osamu, he is one of the best personifications of the characters in this story who find their life's meaning outside of volleyball despite being incredibly good at it, and as such, he is a huge part of the reason that Haikyuu becomes so vast in scope in the final arc. While the story was always about much more than volleyball in terms of meaning and sentiment and themes, it becomes larger than that in terms of content in the Challenger arc, and Noya's character direction is such a great demonstrator of it. This journeyman and free spirit who goes wherever he likes, never tied down but committing wholly to every adventure. Volleyball was beautiful and irreplaceable for Noya, but it was a detour nonetheless, and I'm just glad that we got to witness it in all its brilliance. Number 12, Azumane Asahi. From the absolute first moment I saw Asahi until his final scene, he has completely had my heart. This sensitive soul who wants more than anything to feel exhilaration through the sport, and who never wants to let his brothers down, is one of the beating hearts of Haikyuu. He's incredibly likable and sympathetic through his tendency to lose confidence and get down on himself, but his ascents are so breathtaking that it makes the journey all the more worth it. He is probably one of the least monstrous aces in the series, and yet he rose to the occasion time and time again to compete against the likes of Ushijima, Aran, Hirugami, and Hoshiyumi. One could mistake his redemption against Dateko as the end of his character arc, but Furudate continuously builds upon this, leading to his best moments in the series during the Kamomedai match, where he finally learns to trust in himself and emerge from his metamorphosis. 
He has phenomenal dynamics with Hirugami, the rest of the third years, Nishinoya, and more. And although his flight was cut short just as it started, I have no doubt that it stood him in good stead for the rest of his life. Number 11. Shinsuke Kita Kita is maybe my favorite high-impact, low-screen-time character that I've ever seen, and he has the distinction of being the character that I actually believe changed my life. Now, of course, Haikyuu is one of my absolute favorite stories, and anything that can claim that will have had a huge impact on me, but Kita's character introduction was the moment. The way his prepared, calm nature offers this sort of serene touch to the story. The way he views results in life as simple byproducts of preparation. The straightforward and logical way he's able to avoid stressors by emphasizing a holistic, proper way to take on life. Experiencing this actually helped me with my anxiety and offered this whole new viewpoint, while obviously increasing my love for the story. And in addition to this, his monster speech and the way it completely pivots the story thematically and stylistically, how it tackles the concept of what talent even is. It is by far the best way I've ever seen any story discuss the idea, and it is perfect that it comes from the wisest character. He's also an amazing captain, a terrific role model, an integral part of multiple relationships and dynamics. Kita is a beautiful soul. Number 10. Wakatoshi Ushijima Ushijima is the ultimate ideal in Haikyuu. He is admired, worshipped, loved, hated, and envied for his unbelievable strength, mentality, and skill, and he has passed essentially every hurdle he has been faced with with flying colors. He has every reason to think of himself as better than others, and yet, he is the consummate model of a respectful, humble professional. He continuously breaks down and rebuilds himself to fly to greater heights while continuously acknowledging that he is lucky. He is lucky to have been born tall, he is lucky to have great genetics, and he is lucky that he is left-handed. And in spite of all this otherworldly professionalism and humility, he is still a kindred spirit with the rest of our cast. He has immense heart and emotion, deeply thanking his father for protecting the gift that made him different. He wants more than anything to stay on the court, and when push comes to shove, he cannot stomach losing and needs to crush the competition in front of him. He is likable, layered, thematically potent, emotional, and shonen as all hell, and most of all, he is so damn cool. Number 9. Kenma Kozume for me and many others, the concept of the Kurasuno Nekama rivalry and friendship, and the prospect of the battle at the garbage dump in Nationals was one of the hooks and emotional cores going into the second half of the series. But the mini plotline within the grander plotline here had to do with Kenma, how he really didn't enjoy volleyball much at all, that he was only doing it for the hell of it. He has such a beautiful backstory with Kudo centered on the sport, and we get the impression that there is some passion deep inside there but it hadn't been unearthed yet. It took Hinata, someone polar opposite to Kenma and as a result, someone absolutely perfect for the job, to communicate through back and forth competition that Kenma did care about this. And so seeing him fight tooth and nail, screaming at his teammates, doing all that he could to win not because he vaguely felt like it, but because he needed to stay on the court regardless of the fact that he held no long-term aspirations to be a volleyball player, this is one of Haikyuu's watershed moments, so gratifying for Kudo, Hinata, and the reader, and it solidifies Kenma as as good an example as any other character of the beauty of the sport. Plus, Furudate goes hard as hell with some of the metaphors portraying Kenma as this evil mastermind throughout the match. Number 8. Kei Tsukishima one of the most iconic moments in the entire series occurs in the middle of the Shida Torizawa match, as Tsukishima reaches a gigantic apex in his character arc and finally, wholeheartedly seems to fall in love with volleyball in spite of all the resentment he held towards it prior. You know this, I know this, and you don't need me to describe the beauty of this moment. It's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. However, what I think is wonderful about Suki is that his character could have easily plateaued and stalled here, having experienced his breakthrough moment. But instead, he continues to grow and progress in more subtle, underlying ways, and his roles in plenty of the games after Shira Torizawa are somehow nearly as good. It's not easy to pick up after such a gigantic moment for a character in the middle of a series, but Furudate has Suki consistently learning, growing, and developing in subtle ways as his relationships and knowledge deepen. 
villain. He has one of the more subtle character conclusions, but it is no less powerful than his most bombastic, as he just can't help but smile thinking about how much he wants to continue to push himself in this sport that he now so wholeheartedly loves. Number 7. Korai Hoshiyumi It goes without saying that Haikyuu's antagonistic cast is brilliant beyond words. It's full of varied, layered psychologies all contrasting our protagonists in unique and interesting ways and yet being able to relate to them on some level. We've mentioned a few of them on this list already, and there will be a few more after this, but the point here is that the antagonists in this cast are amazing. And yet, there was still a sort of void and a role to fill, because Hinata specifically had not yet found a proper foil. Until Hoshiyumi. And what ensues from their meeting is one of my absolute favorite dynamics, as these two who have long since known battle it out and communicate through their craft in this duel to reach the top. They are simultaneous rivals and partners, pushing one another to succeed with the ultimate goal being to prove to the world that they can do this. But most of all, it's simply done to achieve their dreams. But of course, Hoshiyumi is a brilliant character outside of his dynamic with Hinata, with a beautiful relationship with Hirugami, a rich and thematically potent backstory, a great addition to the Little Giants theme, and some raw-as-hell he's-him moments all over the place. He is a late addition to the story, but he is absolutely masterful at everything he does. Number 6. Kotaro Bokuto I believe Kotaro Bokuto is Haikyuu's greatest use of subtext when it comes to a character. He is obviously deeply lovable from the moment he joins the cast, but the Mujinazaka match is so essential in letting us into his world and conveying the sheer profundity of his spirit and what he represents. From the implied loneliness he experienced at being far too bolsterous for his middle school to keep up, to the beautiful bond he shares with Fukudo Dani and how much they adore supporting him through thick and thin, it's such a heartwarming journey and Bokuto's unapologetic and pure passion is plain for all to see. Whether others are intimidated or scared of him initially, whether they're a little timid or shy, everyone ends up loving and appreciating Bokuto and athletes like him specifically are a big part of why sport can be such a joy. And while he is such a great personality from the outside, the more you think about how he came to be this way and what he represents, the better and better he gets. Number 5. Tanji Washijo I am Washijo's biggest fan. From the moment we see him in Shira Torizawa, he just seems to have that something extra to him, and he only goes from strength to strength from there. He's one of the very best antagonists in Shonen, and he just gets more profound, nuanced, and beautiful the more you think about him. He begins as an example of the cynical side of sport, having failed to make his dreams a reality and having learned and grown accustomed to the strange comfort of perceived impossibility. This integrates so beautifully with the compensatory way he builds Shira Torizawa as a team to complement all the strengths that he was bereft of as a child. The strengths that he vicariously lives through as he tries to fly. We then take in the way he looks at Hinata with this complex mix of admiration, envy, resentment, and regret, and in such a human way tries to defeat him to safeguard his pride, and fails. And then we see the slow ascent, as he cannot help but root for the boy to succeed not just for himself in the present, but for the young boy that believed it to be impossible from the past. Washijo's arc is beautiful. He's one of the most emotional and integrative characters in the series, and without him, Haikyuu would be missing something irreplaceable. Number 4. Toru Oikawa Outside of Hinata and Kagiyama, I'd reckon that Oikawa is the most important character in the entire story for what he does for it thematically. He starts off as this incredibly cocky and petty rival figure to oppose Karasuno and Kagiyama specifically, but we soon realize that he isn't cocky at all. In fact, he is plagued by insecurities and an inferiority complex, haunted by the idea that no matter what he does, he will never be able to surpass those he views as geniuses. Those who are special. The story seems to hint at the idea that there are some people that are just born better than others no matter what, and that no matter how much work and practice is put in, those who are not geniuses like Oikawa will never be able to stand atop the grandest stage. It's a very cynical and sobering idea. But then, Oikawa decides, even in the midst of losing his final high school game, that he will not accept that, that he will do all that he can to defy that fate, and that he has no right to give in to that idea until he has done absolutely everything he can. 
And then we see a metamorphosis. And then we later see Kita's speech about monsters, contextualizing that Oikawa's journey is uphill, but it is also possible. And so we see through this reversal that talent, as people traditionally think of it, does not exist. People are born different, and lucky, or unlucky, but each element of their makeup factors into whether or not they'll achieve their dreams. And every single monster has worked tirelessly for their goal to come to fruition. And by the end of the series, that includes Oikawa too, as he takes on all of his rivals on top of the world. Number 3. Atsumu Mia. Atsumu is perhaps my favorite example in media of a personification of pure, raw, unfettered passion. When he was a boy, he witnessed something pivotal, the beauty of a perfect set, all teed up for a hitter to strike. And from then on, he decided what he wanted to be and never looked back. He was poor at communication, rough around the edges, self-interested, and outwardly egotistical, but luckily for him, his brother was able to keep him in check, and he ended up powering himself into what it seemed he was always destined to become, a pure monster of a setter who puts utmost care into his sets. Atsumu is a man of extremes. He lives for the theater of the sport, good or bad, and he isn't afraid to let others know when he feels they aren't performing. But he isn't a hypocrite and directly applies this to himself as well. He has some of the best relationships in the series, with Osamu, Hinata, Kita, and low-key dynamics with Oikawa and Kageyama and more. And overall, no one embodies the love for sport and all that it is better than Atsumu. Number 2. Tobio Kageyama. In most other stories, a character of Kageyama's quality would be a shoe in for number one. But Haikyuu isn't like most other stories, so I'm going to reluctantly have to place him at runners up. But that by no means indicates any weakness in his character. In fact, I don't think any are executed better than him. Kakiyama is a fantastic character throughout the entire series, with phenomenal dynamics all over the place, great presentation, amazing growth, etc. He has such substance and depth, and his arc alone is enough to cement him as a shonen great. But then, chapter 387 happened, and with one chapter, everything we knew about him gets an extra layer. His earlier behaviors are now recontextualized as a grief response, his desolation is made even more tragic, and overall he is just enriched to the nth degree because of what we learn about his relationship with his grandpa Kazuyo. But because all of these darker or sadder elements are enhanced, so too are the beautiful moments. Namely his relationship with Hinata and how the two saved one another almost symbiotically. With Kageyama, nearly every weighty line has a double meaning to it, and that is what makes one of my absolute favorite in the entire series, I'm here, so gratifying. Kageyama was found, and my eyes well up with tears every time I think about the sheer weight of what that meant for him. Number 1. Shoyo Hinata There was only ever going to be one answer to this. Hinata Shoyo is high Q. Every tiny bit of essence of the story is baked into his writing and presentation. Every stroke of the pen and line of dialogue from him is crafted with utmost care in showing us the spirit of Furudate's masterpiece. From his humble beginnings and dream, to how he worked endlessly however he could to try to find a place on the court, to delightfully accepting any set that Kageyama gave him, to having to humble himself, mature, and gain other dimensions. How his hunger grew as he learned other ways to stay on the court, how he reached the peak of the human experience through all of his duels with all of the characters I've mentioned prior, and how he suffered the most immense heartbreak upon learning his final lesson. But loyal to who he is, Hinata never let that deter him and use that as fuel for his fire. Properly thinking things through, incorporating a mature, holistic way to live and prepare into his life and ultimately becoming the greatest possible version of himself he could become. Hinata makes me proud. He has so many masterful dynamics with so many characters, so many moments that make my heart swell. He is wonderful, but he is full of flaws to maintain a grounded humanity and relatability and to make the trek to the top that much more gratifying. Hinata is a character I look to for endless encouragement, emotions, and inspiration, and he is definitely in the conversation for my favorite character of all time. Now, this probably wasn't an overly surprising number one, and I doubt it was much of an overall controversial list, but this is wholly mine, and while I'm sad that I couldn't give some of the honorable mentions the spotlight, I'm pretty happy with it. 
Of course, with the sheer amount of amazing characters in this narrative, I'm sure that there isn't a single list out there that doesn't have at least a handful of differences, so please feel free to share your takes in the comments if you'd like. More of my quote-unquote regular content will be in the pipeline soon. But until then, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter for some more free-flow, casual content, manga reads, and blind game playthroughs. Many thanks for watching.